Hey, hi, hello, how are you? I'm Pia and today I'm going to be talking about all the books that I read during June. So I cannot believe we have entered another month. Another month has passed us by. I don't know how to explain things. But it's happened. We're here. It's July. I've read lots of books and this is my best reading month so far. I get myself into this every time and I'm like, oh, I read so many books. Let me tell you how many. And I really just don't know off the top of my head ever. I read 15 books. Love that. It's a nice like number. I read so many. Let's talk about them. As always, I'm going to go in the order in which I read them. I do have reading vlogs for all of these. So the first book I read happened to be an audiobook and that was Two Night Owl from Dogfish by Meg Walter and Holly Goldberg Sloan. This is a middle grade and it's a Piscillary. It's between Dogfish and Night Owl. They are these two girls and they are emailing back and forth because their dads have actually striked up a romance and they want their daughters to get to know each other because we might be seeing a lot more of each other. And they decide that they should go to camp together at the summer. So it's kind of these two girls who really don't want to have anything to do with each other they don't want to be friends they don't want their dads in a relationship at all and um eventually they strike up this lovely adorable friendship and it's so so cute i love this so much it's a fun freaking time i gave it four out of five stars i really really enjoyed this it's one of my favorite middle grades so far that i've read and i think it's really good next up i listened to another audiobook this was big summer by jennifer weiner this is, let me try to explain this. This is about a plus size influencer who is attending the wedding of her kind of frenemy after the, I think the rehearsal or something like that. Her friend, frenemy, ends up dead, murdered. So it turns into a murder mystery. I loved this because it had so much more than this like, had so much more than this like intriguing murder mystery. I felt really attached to the characters. I really loved um, our main character and I loved her backstory and I really liked learning all about these things. I'm finding that like things that <laughs> I've said before that I don't like, you know, maybe I don't like a lot of thrillers. I don't like a lot of horror, lots of things that are just overdone. I really need to be attached to the characters in order to kind of gel with the story in order to have a good time. So I, I really, loved this one. I think I gave it like four stars, four and a half stars, something like that. It was so so great. Like I literally teared up. I love this so much and you wouldn't think like a kind of mystery thriller, not thriller, like a mystery would make me do that but it did and I loved it so much. Then I read The Seven and a Half Deaths by Evelyn of, <laughs> oh gosh, then I read The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Torton. This is very interesting. <laughs> it's about a main character who is waking up in a different body every day of this kind of crime, <laughs> crime simulation thing. And he has to figure out, he has to break this cycle of her death and figure out what's going on as he every day is losing himself more and more into these people that he's portraying. And there's other players going on who are also trying to solve this before he can so that they can get out of this huge like simulation thing. It's so weird. I would say this is like that that book every day meets Knives Out. But it's all this like big metaphor and it really like tests, I don't, I don't know why I'm holding my phone. <laughs> it really just like questions kind of uh, moral integrity and, and humanity in some ways. And I did really like it. I did find it kind of confusing. Maybe that's my fault because I wasn't the audiobook or anything like that, but I did give it like three, 3.5 stars. Um, I definitely had a good time reading it. I thought it was really interesting. I liked the twist at the end when we find out kind of who our main character is, what his relationship is with the story, how he got to where he is. And I thought it, I thought it was really great. So it was, it was pretty good. Then I read an arc I had uh, of a graphic novel and this is called Cheer Up, Love and Pom Poms. This is a queer romance. It's a female female romance. It is not out. It will be out in August. And I love this. This was so, so great. Obviously because it was Pride Month, I wanted to read queer stories. I'm always reading queer stories. So like, I really, it really doesn't matter the month. It is so queet, so queet. It is so, so cute. We have these two girls who were best friends and they kind of stopped being friends at some point and are now kind of rekindling that friendship, and, you know, finding solace in each other, uh, developing in a relationship, and they're all on the cheer squad. Our main character who is just like kind of doing cheers to like fill her applications for like college and then our other main character who's like the cheer captain and she is also a trans girl and she's getting um, all sorts of pressure thrown at her for being like token like trans kid and um, I loved how this was done. I loved the art style. I loved just the story going on. I think it tackled some really great things. And I gave it four out of five stars. It was super cute, super enjoyable. 
Love it a lot. Alrighty, then I read Aristotle and Dante Discovered the Secrets of the Universe by Benjamin Alaris Sanz. I listened to this one again. This audiobook is actually narrated by Lone Manuel Miranda, which is very cool. It has a ton of awards. It was fantastic. This is about Aristotle and Dante, who are just happen to be two people named after <laughs> ancient philosophers, and they meet. And Ari is kind of having a really difficult time at home. He doesn't feel really connected to any of his family members. He has this like elusive older brother that no one talks about and he just feels really really alone and he meets Dante who is just absolutely <laughs> just different than anyone else he's ever met. Um, introduces him to his you know weird family and they just strike up this awesome friendship and they really just like confide in one another and share their oddities and and really just like understand one another and um, can be there for each other and have such a powerful friendship um, and it does have a little bit of a romance. It was so good. I gave this four out of five stars. It was fan freaking fantastic. I gave everything like four out of five stars. Then I read Loveless by Alice Oseman. This is about a girl who is starting her first year of university and she is very alone. She's not with any of her friends. She is in a new like Shakespeare society um, and she's also discovering that she may identify as arrow ace or uh, a romantic asexual and she is kind of dealing with coming to terms with that because as much as the queer community is mostly accepting um, there are some general marginalizations and even discrimination within the queer community of these identities that aren't talked about so much and um, you kind of it kind of tackles that as well as her just coming to terms with her herself accepting herself and loving herself and um we also have this amazing like group of friends which i really love the friendship aspects in this are so so fantastic and i love every single one of these characters so so much especially our main character uh i don't see a lot of asexual rep in books not nearly enough so i definitely appreciated that and yeah this was great it also has a side um female female romance so i really enjoyed this and i gave this four to five stars then i read this will be funny someday by katie henry this was so good i listened to the audiobook of this and this is katie henry's newest book it's her third release and i love this book <laughs> this is about a girl who she's content with her life she has a boyfriend she's kind of lost all of her friends but she doesn't speak up for herself she doesn't really feel like she has a place in the world and she stumbles literally uh, into a comedy club accidentally performs a set um and then just falls in love with this world of comedy of stand-up and it's so great unfortunately she is lying to basically everyone she knows um, everyone thinks she's in college and things like that she's not telling her family or friends and she also is in this really abusive really toxic relationship and so tread with caution if that is any of your triggers so heartbreaking <laughs> I I just I I can't say enough about enough good things about Katie Henry. I think that she comes up with such inventive concepts um, but makes them so approachable. I mean her last book was talking about like the end of the world preparers and like now it's like about a stand-up comedian like like things that you don't think you would relate to but it's so relatable. She's so funny. Our characters are really dynamic. I love the friendships that are formed in here as well as the family dynamic is really interesting and it's just so so fantastic. I gave it five out of five stars. I love I love this book so much. <laughs> then I read Get a Life Chloe Brown by Talia Hib Hibbert. I can't freaking speak. This is the first book in the Brown Sisters series um, and it's a romance. It is following our main character Chloe Brown who is chronically ill. I believe she has fibro fibromyalgia. I cannot. And she decides to make this list. It's her Get a Life list and she just wants to do a bunch of things that are outside of her comfort zone. Um, and she enlists <laughs> the help of her super hot landlord to help her do it. You know, hijinks and love ensues from there. <laughs> I love Chloe Brown as a main character. I really love Red, our love interest. Um, I really just love all the Brown sisters. I think they're so fun and spunky and sassy. I think they're such great characters to read from. They're not your typical like cookie cutter romance uh, characters, which I love, love, love. And overall, I just really, really enjoyed this romance. I thought it was so so sweet, so cute, and definitely has like your steamy things if you're into that. Has something for everyone, I think. Um, and I gave this four out of five stars. Definitely excited to read the rest of these books. <laughs> I read Ten Truths and a Dare by Ashley Elston. This is kind of a companion to Ten Blind Dates. We have some of the same characters, but it's not like a direct 
sequel so you don't really have to read that book um but I would recommend you do because it's great so we are following Olivia she's a cousin of the main character of the previous book she has everything figured out she knows she's going to college like everything's great it's the end of her senior year and she finds out that her like her gym course that she really didn't take seriously she's not getting credit for and so she is scrambling with the end of the year parties and shenanigans to try to get the credit for this class and graduate. I just love the characters in these books. I think Ashley Elston's characters are so, so fun. Like, I love it. We have this big family and just such great relationships and dynamics between all the characters. Um, there also is a romance as well, but I think it's just such a great story. I think it's, I think it's just fantastic. I would read anything about this group of characters. I hope that there are more books about them going off to college and doing their thing. I just like cannot wait. It is so so much fun and I gave this four to five stars. Alrighty then I read Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. It's her newest release. I mean if you haven't heard of this what are you doing? This follows the children of Mick, not Mick Jagger, Mick Riva. He has these kids that he just leaves to his wife and goes around the world being a rock star and cheating on his wife. Just leaves these kids to fend for themselves and now they're all grown up. They have careers in surfing and modeling and all the, these things living in Malibu. And this is about set over 24 hours, but there are a lot of flashbacks to the past. So it's not like <laughs> it is following the four children as they are having this like yearly huge bash that they have and you know from the start of it that there's going to be this huge fire at the end of it so kind of anticlimactic <laughs> to be honest with that with that uh information but i mean she does it again like I, am i surprised that i absolutely loved this book i read it over a train ride so i i literally just sat down read this book <laughs> I, I didn't stop to do anything else i find her writing fantastic her characters are so believable i just like i didn't think i could love it i just didn't think she could keep doing bangers and she just keeps doing it so if you haven't read this and you're scared to read it maybe pick it up just do it just do it you know for all of our sakes then I read Simmer Down by Sarah Smith this is about these two people who run competing food trucks and they're kind of fighting for the spot on the lot and there's like this huge like festival at the end of the summer or something and they have to like win and get money and stuff I liked this I thought it was a good romance I liked kind of it's a hate to love romance but like I really liked our main characters I think their banter was really fun they all had like important stakes going on but I definitely think that some things were a little bit too dramatic dramatized Drama dramatized maybe like just blown out of proportion a little bit i give this three stars i think it was fun but i don't think it was my favorite romance but if you like reading about food and food trucks okay then i reread daisy jones and the six i can't say much about this because i loved it and i've, I've read it i upon reread gave this five out of five stars i previously gave it four stars i don't know what i was thinking i was obviously not on the right mindset but this is fantastic. It's fantastic. You've heard about it. You know it. You love it. I would say that if you're planning on reading Malibu Rising and you have to read this book, you don't have to read it. But this is just so good. I just adore this book. I adore it. With every fiber of my being, I definitely recommend the audiobook as the way to go for this one. You like listening to audiobooks if you can listen to audiobooks. Um, yes, because this is told in an interview. And it's fantabulous. It's fantastic. Then I read Felix Ever After by Casey Callender. This is about a trans kid in his probably senior year of high school I think goes to this art school he doesn't feel like he's found his voice at all he's like what am I doing everything for like I'm reaching for this huge goal of this one scholarship um but I don't really realize why I'm doing it anymore like I really don't know what I'm fighting for he ends up having this like huge gallery and they call it a gallery but like <laughs> it doesn't really make sense if I call it a gallery so basically someone posts all these pictures of him uh before he transitioned and like threw up all his dead name everywhere you know to slander him and then he starts getting these really abusive attacking messages on Instagram um of someone being like you don't deserve to be alive he is also dealing with the fact that like his dad isn't really like too comfortable with his sexuality he's also coming like to new terms trying to discover who he is still figuring out his identity he has this mom who's not in the picture he has this best friend who's like you know are they more than that he's also talking anonymously to this guy who he was trying to blackmail because he thought he was it was it's a whole thing it does kind of have a love triangle but i wouldn't here's the thing like i'm notorious for saying i hate love triangles but i wouldn't call it one and i think it also really handles discussions of like teen relationships really well i think it really tackles like different questions that aren't really addressed is like what kind of love do i feel for this person you know like is this me wanting to do this that and the other thing like what am i getting out of 
this relationship, which I feel like is more of an adult topic, but I think it's great that it is, you know, coming to this younger audience. I, overall, I really like this book. I think it would be great for fans of Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens agenda, but I do think it kind of had that extra push, you know, bringing it, contextualizing it, bringing it to more modern, I guess. I think it did a great job of um, being a very good contemporary queer book, addressing different identities, communities, prejudice, discrimination, all of that. So I think it did a really good job and I really liked it. Give me four out of five stars. And I read People You Made on Vacation by Emily Henry. I love this book. It's so great. I didn't think I could love this book more than I loved Beach Read, which I read last year, but somehow I did. This is about these two best friends, Alex and Poppy. They're complete opposites. They meet in college and they decide that every year they're going to, they decide that every year they're going to dedicate their summers to each other and spend a whole time doing a vacation. So many years have passed. They actually have lost contact after two years and they had this falling out and they're now coming back together to do one vacation, trying to see like if they can still be friends. It's like awkward and weird. Everything's kind of <laughs> going awry. And we do keep flashing back to all these different summers that they spent um, going on these different trips so we're introduced to them as you know they had this past falling out there's it's still icy between them we don't really know what happened and we're also getting the story of how they became these great friends it's so great I like, as most people know best friends lovers is probably my favorite trope in books so this obviously had that and eventually becomes a romance i mean like i have undying love for these characters <laughs> love them so much i think it was great this also has like an, another like influencer which i thought i hated reading about influencers but like maybe i don't so such a beautiful friendship that i love oh god my time's coming out i'm sorry <laughs> um that i loved there was one thing at the end which i was like oh this is like going great and then i was like why wow, wow. And I feel like it was a little bit blown out of proportion. Like personally, like I would not have felt so butthurt about it. Other than that, I think it was just such a fantastic book. It's so good. Five stars. Loved it. Last book I read was Take a Hit, Danny Brown. This is the second book in the Brown Sister series. So obviously I read Get a Life, Chloe Brown. Now this is the second one. This is following the second sister, Danny Brown. She is a awesome bi professor and she gets, she has this photo taken of, <laughs> taken of her with this guy who's her friend, who's like the security guard there. People think they're dating and it's launching this whole great thing for his like nonprofit that he has going on. And so they're like, why don't we just keep fake dating? Little does she know this man is freaking in love with her <laughs> and she's like i i just want like casual things like i i just i'm not good at relationships i don't want to do it and so they have these very two different interests but they're fake dating spending more time together things happen you know um i didn't unfortunately like this as much as i liked chloe brown i just feel like it's hard to differentiate the brown sisters i think that they have distinct personalities from other characters but not from each other if that makes any sense they're very much like the fun spunky like sassy um like won't take shit from anybody gals which i love like we stand but i just like can't really differentiate them too much and i didn't love it as much as the other romance the other the other one <laughs> i will read the third book i still i still love the series i give it three out of five stars like, it was great i have been talking for so long i keep wanting to be like i just need to read more and more every month like i just need to keep having it happen and then i get to filming my wrap up and i'm like i just want to stop talking <laughs> anyways let me know what you read in june what you're reading in july what you're reading right now what you read yesterday let me know <laughs> make sure to like and subscribe to all the things and i will see you in my next video bye mm -hmm.